transportation to your animal. There it goes. How about now, now that I've muted myself, can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. So that's always a good thing. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. You do have the option of unmuting yourself if you need to speak, but I'm going to mute everybody so that way there's not going to be a whole bunch of feedback. And um, there are a few people here that some of you have met already um, that you're going to end up um, talking or hearing about from them, um, their different perspectives and how they're going to help you with your journey here at Brookline College. So um, I have um, a few people here um, and I'll, I'll just go down the line and have them um, speak to you and then we'll move on from there. Um, after they're done talking, um, there's, um, they'll leave unless you have any questions for them. And then uh, we'll just keep moving on with our meeting. Um, because Nicole was very gracious and got a lot of things done for us off of this meeting, um, it should not should not take as long as what I had originally scheduled. So if you're freaking out that it's going till 3.30, um, I'm freaking out that it might go till 3.30. So it, it, I don't think it's going to actually happen. All right. Um, this should be actually a fairly uh, short meeting um, since we have a lot of the things been taken care of through admissions um, with you guys already. All right. So with that said, um, I'm going to have Hannah um, talk to you. She's from the LRC. Okay, hi, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm the librarian at the Phoenix campus at the Learning Resource Center. Um, we call it the LRC. Um, it's basically your campus library. Um, so it's where you would go to check out materials, um, use the computers, let's see, print stuff. Um, and so you would also access the electronic resources there. Um, so we have our web page. Um, I don't know if I can share my screen or if we don't need to go that far into detail. Um, but basically on the LRC homepage, um, you would get there through Moodle and the link is like in the top left corner of the page. And um, you'll see our schedule of the different like workshops and um, the webinars that we offer. So we offer workshops for like using Microsoft Word um, programs, Excel, PowerPoint, um, and we also offer an APA webinar. So that's the only one that you would have to register for. The instructions for how to do that are on the page. Um, but everything else, there's like a live link that you would click on at the time of the workshop. Um, let's see. We have a lot of different databases and like research guides and tutorials that you guys will find helpful. Um, and we also have a new virtual library help desk. Um, so if it's like after hours, you guys can contact us through there. It's just a little form that you would fill out um, with your question and one of the librarians will get back to you. Um, I believe it's within one business day. Um, so that's pretty cool. And if you wanted like a more in-depth LRC overview, we do have orientations scheduled for next week. Um, if any of you are able to pop into one of those, we would love to have you. Um, I think we have about four scheduled for next week. So. That's where we would show you more um, of like what the databases are and what they offer um, and how to navigate them. So that's pretty much that's the LRC in a nutshell. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about the LRC or the um, what you're going to be able to use through their resources? Um, also, my contact information is on that homepage as well. So if you like think of a question later and you want to email me, anybody can certainly do that. All right, I think that's it, Hannah. Thank you. Okay, thanks guys. <laughs> Bye. All right, let's go to career services with Stephen. Actually, career services is me. <laughs> Oh, this is Shannon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. That's okay. I was okay. looking at you and then saw Steve hop, hop. That's okay. Phone. All right. Let, okay, let's deal with career services and go with Shannon. No problem. So some 
of you already know who I am. I see a few names that popped up on the video that look familiar. Uh, but my name is Shannon Fisher, and I am the Career Services Advisor, one of three. Um, but I do handle the MLT and MLS program. Um, we do everything from assisting you with getting your resume started if you need help with that, getting your resume formatted and fixed up, interviewing, get your, getting, assisting you with getting your foot in the door to different positions, helping you and coaching you with how to interview, going over some frequently asked questions, um, and then assisting you with getting your resume to recruiters and to the right context. Because ultimately my job is to help you find a position in your field of study. Um, along the way through your journey, I am here to help you with positions that may be semi-related, that will give you some medical experience if you don't already have that. Um, but definitely we wanna get your resume up, up and running and professional. That way, as you get close to the end, we can get it out to various employers for you um, because that is my goal, like I said, to help you find a position in your field. If that's about it. And then if anybody has any questions? No questions? All right, thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. All right, now for career services, not students, the, not, boy, I'm having a hard time. Career services was Shannon. Now we're gonna to go to student services with Stephen. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, my name is Steve Moore. I'm student services advisor here at the Phoenix campus. And it actually worked out well the way that uh, Roger was introduced to both Shannon and I. And here's why. Because um, my position and what I can do for you all overlaps with a lot of what Roger and, and faculty does and also with a lot of what Shannon does. And here's what I mean by that. So um, as your student services advisor, my role is to support you guys. And so what does that mean? Well, it means what it means for each individual person. So what I can do varies depending upon what's needed. Um, Roger and faculty can assist with academic related issues, right? Specific to curriculum assignments, <clears throat> tutoring, due dates, tests, everything that you would expect faculty to do. And then Shannon does what she's already explained that she can do. What I do is everything outside of that, right? Um, everything else that affects school, outside of school, life stuff, we can talk about tips, tricks, best practices for study habits, time management, professional development, networking, any questions you have just about life in general and how do I manage this, um, send it my way. Um, additionally, I can facilitate communication. So as you know, right, life gets busy and as everybody knows right now, pretty interesting times to put it uh, politely, right? Um, and so things can be a little bit confusing. And if you need anybody to kind of connect the dots for you, give me a call. If you're reaching out to faculty, program directors, whoever it is, and we're not getting back to you in a timely fashion, I promise you it's not on purpose. It's just because we're trying to get everything done as quickly as we can. Let me know what's going on and I can help fill in those gaps. Um, I will be emailing all my new students here over the next couple of days. Please uh, put my contact information in your phone if you'd like. Feel free to email me, call me. I'm always here to help. Uh, again, my name is Steve Moore. I'm student services here at the Phoenix campus. Um, and that's it. It's nice to virtually meet you all, right? If you guys have any questions, you can let me know now um, or reply back to me here via email over the next couple of days. So all that being said, any questions I can answer for anybody right now? Fair enough. I appreciate that. Um, good luck to everybody, right? And I want to remind you guys... Um, especially with right now what's going on, there's a thousand reasons and excuses that everybody could make, myself included, why we should be demotivated or why we should not progress, right? You guys aren't doing that. You're choosing to do the opposite. You're choosing to say, you know what? I'm not gonna let all the craziness that's going on right now beat me. Most people wouldn't do that. So you guys are a special group. So give yourself a pat on the back for that. Give yourself some credit for that. Let me know if you need me. I'm here to help you out. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, move over to the registrar. So Tammy, uh, would you like to speak now, please? Or not?
I don't know what's uh, happening with uh, Tammy's. It doesn't look like she's got uh, video or audio going on right now. So um, if you can see the um, name in the very bottom, it's Tammy. She is your registrar. So she'll be the one that's going to be doing the um, all your information. So the the transcripts, all the information for you to be able to go get registered for your classes, that's who you're going to be dealing with. Um, I, as your program director, will be submitting the information to Tammy, but Tammy is the registrar. She is the one that keeps all that information for you as you go through the program. And uh, I guess we'll just uh, move on to Nicole then. Hi guys, I'm Nicole Giannini. I'm the director of admissions here. Uh, it's good to see some really familiar faces back here with us and to actually put faces to uh, individuals that I've been texting with. Um, I'm the one that sent you the confirmation text uh, over orientation. Uh, this is very difficult for me. I'm Italian, full-blooded, and by this point in time in your enrollment process, we've probably hugged 15 times on campus. Um, we've had multiple conversations, but we'll have to do with what we have to do here. Um, my team and myself, if you haven't re uh, received any uh, contact from me, you will be over uh, the next 24 hours. But my team is here to support you every step of the way. Um, we have a, an am amazing admissions team uh, that will help you alongside the registrar, student services, career services, your faculty, your program director. Uh, it's really, truly your success team. Uh, with that being said, uh, I'm really happy to see, I'm really excited to see some old faces and some new faces here with us. You guys truly are the unsung heroes of everything that is going on right now with COVID-19. Um, the medical lab techs, they do not get the credit where credit is due. Uh, you guys are day in, day out in the labs and making sure that these tests are being run and the results are being proven. So kudos to all of you. This is really exciting field. If I like science at all, this would have been the field that I would have went into. <laughs> so I give you guys a lot of credit. <laughs> welcome. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. Um, I see that there's a couple of uh, phones that are up. Um, I don't know whether or not that is somebody that's outside, uh, anybody that's in administration that's joined us that wants to say hello to the students. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go to Dr. Omar and I'll have you go ahead and introduce yourself. Don't get into too many details. Remember, we're going to play that fun little PowerPoint. So go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Omar uh, J. Acevedo, and uh, I will be teaching um, the students. And if there are students over here, um, so welcome to this semester. Okay. All right, and then we'll go ahead and uh, Dawn. Want to say hi to everybody? Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome uh, to orientation. It's really nice to see you all. Um, I'm an instructor as well, and uh, looking very forward to this semester, and I would just like to um, reiterate what Steven said. I'm very excited to see you all here, because like he said, most people would just, you know, drop out and give up, you know, based off of all the challenges that we're going to have technically probably this semester. So it's really good to see you all here, and I also want to... Um, Congratulate you all for continuing your education. And I think this semester is gonna be really, really great. So thank you very much for being here. And I look forward to meeting you all in person at some point in time. Um, and to the returning students, it's really good to see you all again. Takara, Cynthia, Mays, Nima, Jasmine, very, very, very awesome to see you all here. So I look forward to meeting the new ones as well. So thank you very much. All right, thanks, Don. All right, so I'm gonna do a screen share. Um, I put together a PowerPoint based on some information that the instructors had given me to be able to do a get to know you kind of thing with the instructors. So we're gonna do that fun thing before we start going into the dry stuff about the things that you have to do for the program. 
So give me a second to uh, do a share. All right, so um, for our program, the instructors are usually gonna be teaching in both programs, both the medical lab tech, the associate's degree and the medical lab science in the four-year degree. And so um, I have have a few that are adjunct and, and Don and Omar are my full-time employees for the full-time faculty teaching in both programs. And so I've asked, like I said, I've asked them to ask um, return these questions to me so I can put together this PowerPoint and believe it or not I'm going to give you a quiz but it's not going to get scored out and you don't have to worry about answering it just to see whether or not you would have an idea out of the five possibilities who you think it actually belongs to for this information so of course we have to go with pets first because that's what seems to always drive people you know when you're first meeting people you're talking about your pets or kids, but a lot of times the pits are kids, so. So, again, you don't have to worry about typing in for chat or anything, just this is gonna be self-scoring, just to see whether or not you have an idea. There's three rescue dogs that are owned by this instructor. The names are Saber, Buster, and Panda. And if you said Anita, you are correct, and she's the one that's gonna be teaching in the MLS program this semester. She'll be teaching the genetics and the organic chemistry for the students that are going into the MLS program. And which instructor has a rescue dog named Penny and a horse named Cisco? That would be Andrea, and she will be teaching the um, the intro to MLT lecture and lab for your um, for your first semester. All right, which instructor has four rescue dogs? The names are TJ, Banks, Coco, and Max. That would be me. And then there's three dogs named Terry, Hershey's, and Haley, and three cats named Ellie, Smokey, and Rudy. That would be Dr. Omar. And which instructor loves all animals but does not have a pet at the current time? Process of elimination, everybody else has been guessed. So that would be Dawn. All right, so moving on to family, talking about siblings. So which instructor has a brother named Ron and a sister named Lynette? That's me. Three brothers, Ricardo, Luis, and Luis Cezial. Dr. Omar. Two sisters, Patty and Barbara are the names. That's for Andrea. Brother named Christopher. That's Don. And a large family for this instructor. Four sisters, Karen, Linda, Benita, and Marquita. And five brothers, Gerald, Eric, Robert, Benjamin, and Nigel. And process of elimination, again, Anita. All right, favorite food? Food's very important. So, whoops, messed up. Which instructor's favorite food is? That would be Italian would be for Dawn. And which favorite food is Middle Eastern? That would be Anita. Which insurgent's favorite food is prime rib? That's me. Insurgent's favorite food is anything that has maple in it. That's from Andrea. That's because she's from the East Coast and there was a lot of maple growing up in her life. 
And I know I already asked this, but there is another instructor that likes Italian food too, and that's Dr. Omar and Don. So I put them together on one sheet. That's why that one sheet was missing. So hobbies, travel, scuba diving, and reading. That would be Don. The hobby is a cello. Would be Anita. Hiking, reading, and crocheting. Andrea, she also said horseback riding, but I thought that was too much of a gimme. Watching Netflix, cooking, listening to music, and travel for the hobbies. That would be Dr. Omar. And golf, tennis, and reading. Process of elimination, I'm the last one, me. So that's a little bit about us as your instructors, just so you know that we're real people. We're not just people that are giving you your grades or telling you to hand in your assignments. We have lives too. Sometimes our lives are mostly Brookline, uh, but we do have lives outside the, to be able to um, try to blow off some of our steam and things like that. So, um, so that's a little bit about us. Um, in a normal situation, sometimes we'll go around the room and have everybody share a little bit about themselves. Um, but because of technology and other kinds of things, I'm not gonna put you guys on the spot of doing that so you can kind of wipe your brow and be hat there. Yeah, Jasmine just gave me a thumbs up. So <laughs> um, there's, there is a, a awkwardness that happens on the technology too so sometimes you you know you're okay doing the the stuff but then all of a sudden you're put on the spot of having to actually talk and of course this is being recorded too so then all the, those things are going to end up being on that kind of thing too so we'll just uh, move on to our next sharing the next sharing is going to be um what you need to fill in for me um this is was sent to you um so, just so you can see it though Uh, it's not showing up on my share. So um, we'll go to the other packet instead. So I'm not going to go over every single thing in, in here, but hopefully everybody can see the packet, the student handbook that was sent to you. So I'm just going to scroll through. And there's a welcome from the faculty. The Brookline College does have a mission statement along with the objectives, and we have a mission statement for the medical laboratory department also, and we have goals. And so um, just so you can hear, hear this, and I'm not, again, I'm not gonna read over everything, but our expectation is to graduate 70% of students to begin the last half of the program. Now, that is a requirement from um, our accrediting bodies, but our actual goal, ultimately, is to have all of you graduate. So um, we want to make sure that you, we're doing everything that we can to be able to make sure that you're successful. We also want to make sure that we have a good pass rate for the Board of Registry exams. So that's one of the things that we try really hard within our classes is that we're not only trying to give you the objectives of what the class is, but we're also trying to make sure that you get the information that you can be successful for your clinical training, for your getting your jobs, but also for you to be able to pass the board registry exam. So, um, I've already talked to you about um, some of the essential functions when we were um, doing our phone interviews. I told you about the expectations for being able to um, stand for long periods of time, sit for long periods of time, so make sure that you're able to have proper dexterity because there's going to be a lot of repetitive motions. There will be a background check and health requirements. There's going to be immunizations that are going to need to be done prior to going out on externship. 
right now, prior to coming into the program, you should have your hepatitis B immunizations done or a waiver done. And that's one of the forms that we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, you do need to be in attendance. For our classes at this point in time, we are gonna be doing um, the majority of our lectures as virtual lectures. And so they are gonna be live at the time that they're normally scheduled. That, and we expect you to come in and attend at that time. We are recording them so that we can view them later, but we do expect you to be on, on the computer and being in attendance for the classes when they're being held. So that's the program for the MLT. That this is the program for MLS. I believe most of your admissions reps have sent you your program of studies so you were able to see what that looked like. Um, the American Society of Clinical Lab Sciences, um, that is an organization that you can belong to. There is a code of ethics that they um, have, and there is a pledge to the professionalism that they do. So, um, and I'm not going to, again, go over all of it, but if you notice, it's maintain and promote standards of excellence in performing and advancing the art and science of my profession. And then the last one, contribute to the general well-being of the community. And like Nicole was saying, that is so important now in light of everything that's going on. The labs are very important. Um, they're important to begin with, but because of everything that's going on, this career, this path that you're chosen is, is even more important for us to be able to make sure that we have qualified people doing everything that they're supposed to. So um, we are expecting you to have integrity, academic integrity to be able to do your own work. Um, obviously, you're, if you're doing your coursework through your cell phone, you're going to end up having it. But if you're on campus, you shouldn't be having your phones in the labs. Um, we are going to be doing um, hybrids, so we are going to be doing uh, some of the labs on site also. Um, we just have to um, regulate how many people are coming in, so that's going to be something that we will be talking about. However, for the first semester classes, um, the ones that you're going into as MLTs and MLSs, there, there won't be any um, on-campus labs or very minimal on-campus labs because of the classes that you're taking. Um, and when you go out on clinical training, that is your fourth semester for the MLT, the eighth semester for the um, MLS. Um, you will be assigned clinical training sites and you need to be um, following everything that's supposed to be done within the sites themselves. It is not an expectation for you to find your own clinical training site, which also means that you should not try to contact any of the clinical training sites. Um, you need to be able to maintain your proper GPA. That's one of the things that's looked at for being able to do placements. You are also going to be trained on doing uh, proper HIPAA to make sure that you're not going to end up um, revealing any information that should not be revealed while you're out in clinical training. When you're out on clinical training, you also, <clears throat> excuse me, are not expected to do um, replacement work. What, what I mean by that is that you are not there to be another employee. You're there to do your education. And I'll talk to you more about that when you go out on, you know, prior to you going out in clinical training. Um, for your academic standing, we do expect you to um, have a 2.0 or higher, C or higher. Um, if you end up having um, a cumulative grade point average that ends up being lower than that, there is potential for you to be dismissed from the program if it's a continual um, aspect in your education. For your certification, um, we do recommend you doing the um, American Society of Clinical Pathologists, um, but you can also sit for the American Med Medical Technologists. Um, either one um, would be considered that you're certified, but um, most places are actually looking for the ASCP um, for hiring. And because we are the NACLS accredited for both MLT and MLS, you can be able to sit for both, um, both exams. This page was sent to you in a separate document that needs to be um, submitted to me along with this page.
and this page. So those three pages were sent to you in a separate document in a PDF form. I just want you to print those out, um, fill them in, and get them submitted to me. And you can bring them in on uh, next week. I will be on campus Monday through Friday, or actually Monday through Thursday. I'm going to be in meetings um, all day Friday. Um, but Monday through Thursday in the mornings, um, 9 o'clock till 12 o'clock, I will be available for you to drop those off and then also come in and get the books that you need to come in. Most of the books are going to be ebooks, but there are some loaner books that you'll need to have for some of your classes. So the genetics um, course and the organic chemistry course for the MLS, they have loaner books, so you'll need to come in and get those. For the general chemistry, for those of you that are um, needing to take general chemistry in the MLT program, that's also a loaner book, so you'll have to come in and get that. All the other books um, within the program are either going to be distributed by your, um, your instructors when you get into those other classes, going into your second and third semester or fifth and sixth semester, or sorry, sixth and seventh semester in the MLS program. The instructors will hand those out, but um, since we're doing things virtually now and you need to be able to have access to your textbooks, the ones that are not ebooks, you'll be coming to campus and getting those loaner books from me next week, Monday through Thursday, anywhere from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. You don't have to do an appointment. You just have to come in and let Susie know at the front desk that you're here to get a book. She'll uh, contact me if I'm not up front already, and then I'll get you the textbook that you need for your classes. So um, any questions on what needs to be done prior to you coming in? Everybody feeling okay with that? All right, um, I did send out an email to, to most of you, so you should have my email address, but it is also um, in, in the um, handouts also. Um, if you have any questions or any kind of concerns or anything else that um, wasn't discussed that you want to um, do an individual ask to me, just send me an email or um, you can send me um, or just call me too. I, I think I gave you my direct phone number also for you to be able to contact me. So if nobody has any questions, um, I think we'll call it for the day and you'll be able to go back to whatever you need to do. Is that okay with everybody? Can I see a thumbs up for the everybody that I can uh, see? All right. All right. I will air quotes see you later. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.